Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Just a quick video. Tesla Q Perma Bear Gordon Johnson went after Tesla again today, and I just wanted to break down what he said, show why he's wrong. We're going to go bit by bit through this. Are you ready? Let's go. In case you missed it, there's a story that Tesla is temporarily stopping production of Model S and Model X for less than three weeks. There's a lot of speculation about why. That's the background for this conversation, along with S&P 500 inclusion. Johnson's going to explain his theory. I'm going to show you why he's wrong. Well, I think it's baffling some people because just a few days ago, Elon Musk put out an email, an internal email that was leaked to the public that said they were effectively uh, production constrained. They needed to significantly increase production. Um, and then a few days later, we find out they're um, shutting down production uh, for the SNX for 18 days. Look, I think it's one of two things. One, one of two things. One being, A being rather, demand is a problem, or B being rather, um, they need to retool or refurbish the model to make it more attractive. Either way, it's a demand problem um, and kind of stands in contrast to what Elon Musk, Musk said just a, day, a few days ago, i.e. that they were production constrained. So as usual, Johnson packs a lot of nonsense in what he says, but let's go over this really quick. First of all, when Elon referred to being production constrained, he was talking about Model 3 and Model Y, that, that that's the high volume vehicles they're trying to produce a lot of. Model S and Model X are a lot less important for Tesla's future because it's inherently a lower volume model. And Tesla's focus in, right now is delivering higher volume models because that's going to make a bigger impact on accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. Second, this idea that there's a demand problem. There's no demand problem. And I actually wondered why are they shutting down S and X? I was concerned. And I kind of had the theory, you know, they just don't sell that many S's and X's. So Maybe I thought maybe there was a demand problem or maybe they had overproduced S's and X's and that's why they're doing this. But I looked on Tesla's website and I shopped for brand new Teslas that are in inventory near me here in South Florida. And I also looked in Southern California near Los Angeles airport where my brother lives. And in both cases, there's hardly any inventory. If there was a demand problem for Model S and Model X, there would be an inventory, there would be a lot of cars in inventory and they're not there. The other thing is, yes, there's a very strong chance that Tesla is going to retool the Model S and Model X line. There's gonna be some kind of refresh. I personally think this may be the moment where they convert Model S and Model X lines to structural battery pack. That is not because there's a demand problem. It's because it gives Tesla an opportunity to make better vehicles that will create more demand for sure, but also lower cost, improve quality, improve efficiency, and continue accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. Not only that, but by doing structural battery pack in Model S and Model X first, it gives Tesla experience for what's coming in Berlin and Giga Texas, Giga Berlin and Giga Texas, where they're gonna start building Model Y and soon Model 3 with structural battery pack. If they can do structural battery pack with Model S and Model X first in lower volumes, that will help them get ready to do it in higher volumes. And listen, we know structural battery pack is coming to Model S because Plaid Model S at the end of 2021 is going to have structural battery pack. We know it's coming. So taking two and a half weeks off, I'm not sure that's enough time to retool all the lines and get everything ready, but that may be where they're going. Taking two and a half weeks off, get the equipment ready, bring the staff back in, and okay, this is the new equipment we're working with. And that's where we're heading. That may be what's coming. But that is not a demand problem. The Model S is eight years old. It's long past time for refresh. A lot of people wanted a refresh. And it's part of the plan of advancing the technology and accelerating the transition to sustainable energy. If they're going to convert Model S and Model X to the 4680 cells that they talked about on battery day, you're going to have to restructure the lines. Tesla is making these 4680 cells now. They're already making, we don't know what volume they're making them in yet. It's not a bad guess to say that in 2021, they will produce 10 gigawatt hours of 4680 cells. And if they produce that many, that's enough for 100,000 Model S's and Model X's. I don't think they'll use that many. I think some of them will go to semi, some of them will go to Cybertruck, but there's a really strong chance that the early versions of the 4680 that are being produced now will go into Model S and Model X, and that's why this is happening. Right, so I think what's important is, look, we're the biggest bears on the street, and our estimate for 4Q deliveries is 180,000. It wasn't that long ago, Gordon Johnson thought that Model 3 sales were gonna fall 
starting in May of 2018. Model 3 sales are way up from May 2018. Listen to what Gordon Johnson said in May of 2018 about Model 3 sales. She was last year you had the first 100% battery electric vehicle car with over 200 miles of range. This year you have four more entering the market. Next year you have 10 more. So I think as competition enters and you see a slowdown in Model S and X sales and potential, potentially Model 3 sales as that competition enters, I think you're going to get some guys starting to shade or, or fade the stock, if you will. If you take all of a sudden, you have a guy who two and a half years ago thought that Model 3 sales were going to fall from a fairly small number, is now projecting that Tesla's sales will be 180,000 for the quarter. You know, and, and by the way, I think Tesla's going to break 200,000 this quarter. I think that's what's really happening. This guy's numbers flex with the times, whatever he can get. There's constantly problems on the horizon. There's constantly things that are going to take Tesla down. He seems to recognize all of a sudden Tesla's on a path. 180,000 vehicles in quarter four would be a pace of 720,000 vehicles a year, which is a lot more than the 500,000 Tesla's shooting for this year. So that means that Gordon Johnson thinks this is a growing company and he calls himself the biggest bear on Wall Street. Just over the weekend, we found out that Tesla is offering free supercharging for a full year if you buy a car made out of Fremont before the end of the year. That suggests they're trying to pull in demand. We found out last week they cut the price on their German inventory cars by 1,090 euro. That's a big price cut. They're trying to push through um, uh, demand. You know, the funny thing is he actually might be right that Elon is trying to pull in demand to hit his target for the end of the year. That's a very common practice with car makers. Meanwhile, I'm watching TV and I see ads on TV for, you know, 84 months of zero interest car loans for various car companies. I don't hear Gordon Johnson saying Nissan or Toyota or whoever has a problem selling cars and has a demand problem when they're offering ridiculous terms. You can get $2,000, $5,000 off the car and you can get a zero interest car loan for 84 months. Are you kidding me? Why isn't Gordon Johnson saying Nissan has a demand problem? Where is that? Tesla is making very small steps. Free supercharging for a year. If you're charging your garage, how much is that really worth? It's not worth much at all. It's not a big deal. It's a nice little sweetener to get a few people in to sell a few extra cars so you hit that number that you're trying to hit for the end of the year. That's it. But he's right. In a sense, yes, it does look like that's a move to try to boost sales and bring in a little demand from next year into this year just to hit a target number. So what? And if you look to China, right? So in China, people got excited about in um, in, in October, the sales were about 12,000. In November, it looks like they jumped to about 21.5 thousand. We believe what enabled that was an 8% price cut at the beginning of October, which we really saw in November. That's the second time that Johnson has mentioned a price cut. He mentioned a price cut in Europe and he mentioned a price cut in China. He's a dimwit. Tesla started shipping cars from China to Europe, which lowers Tesla's costs for delivering cars to Europe so they're able to get the price down. And also Tesla has shifted to lithium iron phosphate batteries in some of the Model 3s, the Made in China Model 3. And lithium iron phosphate costs less than nickel, cobalt, aluminum, or other battery technologies, the battery chemistries that Tesla's been using. So since lithium iron phosphate costs less and you know adds weight, it doesn't reduce the range, but it adds weight, they're selling the cars for less money. No big deal, but they increase sales. He admits they increase sales from 12,000 to 21,000. Again, Gordon Johnson, the perma bear, the perma Tesla Q bear, the guy who hates Tesla, who says that Tesla is failing, is admitting massive, massive growth in sales. With tiny sales, with, with tiny price cuts, he's seeing massive growth in sales. When is he going to hang it up and just acknowledge Tesla is a massively growing company and massively growing companies, companies that grow really, really fast, they're worth a lot of money. That's how the game works. If you have a growth company, that increases their multiples, it increases their values, it increases their share prices. That's the game, my friend. But the problem is that price cut was enabled, enabled by them changing technology, LFP batteries, which are now being widely reported in China to only get 50% of the range in the winter and only get 50% of the range reported today in Europe in the winter in cold weather. That, my friends, was a lie. That's an outright lie. It has not been widely reported that lithium iron phosphate batteries have less range in winter. There were a couple of reports from a couple of people who are whining that their cars didn't have the range they expected in the winter. Here's the truth. All cars lose range in winter. 
Gasoline powered cars lose range in winter. The range that was reported and the story was debunked. The story was debunked. I forget who debunked it, but there's a Tesla uh, YouTuber who debunked this story. The range that was reported is what you would expect. You would expect the same kind of reduction in range for a gasoline powered car. The temperature change, the snow on the road. There's all kinds of factors that reduce vehicle efficiency in winter weather, and that's not special for lithium iron phosphate. We're looking at Tesla's trading at $635 a share, roughly. Where do you think fair value is? I think fair value for Tesla is probably around 60 to 80 bucks. Right. The thesis is simple. Um, Tesla's currently trading at about 200 times earnings, whereas on average, automakers trade around six times earnings. Tesla is seen as a technology company, but they don't have the technology that people think they have with respect to there's no there there with respect to the batteries. He's such a dipshit. So first of all, obviously Tesla has better battery technology. That's why the Model S has over 400 miles of range and the Taycan, the Porsche Taycan can barely manage 200 miles of range. That's why the Model 3 and the Model Y are up well over 300 miles of range and there's really no other EV out there that's getting to 300 miles of range and they're doing it with, they're achieving less range with larger batteries. So obviously Tesla has a technology advantage. You have to have your head up your ass to think they don't have a technology advantage. But this is part of his game. But go back to that 60 to $80 a share. And he talked about 200 times earnings. And it's, you know, different than a, it's higher than the typical car company. He's acknowledged that Tesla is growing fast. The other car companies are not growing. They're shrinking. Rowing companies get higher multiples. This is not rocket science. This just isn't that hard. And Tesla's earnings are just barely starting to get positive. There's plenty of companies out there that have negative earnings and have infinite price earnings ratios. So this is just garbage nonsense. And you know, ultimately the question, I don't think this reporter is gonna ask the right question. You know, the question would be, where do you see Tesla in five years? Where do you see Tesla in 10 years? I don't know if she's going to ask this question. Let's see where that goes. And with respect to S&P inclusion, I think this is important. Since the S&P announced they were going to delay the inclusion about a month and a half ago, or they were going to include them about a month and a half ago, there's been about a billion shares traded. And prior to that, when they reported a profit in 2Q, there was a billion shares traded around that time. However, based on the S&P's own estimate, um, there's about 130 million shares that need to be purchased by indexed fund holders. So the point is, on that inclusion, you're going to potentially have a lot of shares that have been front run, that have been front run on this inclusion um, that are going to have to be sold. So you could have a significant sell off on Friday or before Friday as some of that money that went into Tesla stock looking for inclusions comes off. That didn't make any sense. What are you talking about? You just acknowledged that they have to buy 130 million shares. The index funds have to buy 130 million shares. On top of that, what he didn't acknowledge is there's a lot of funds that benchmark themselves against the S&P 500 index, they're gonna be buying stock too. And he has this fantasy that a whole bunch of people, and I'm sure it's true that some people bought the stock to front run S&P 500 inclusion so that they could sell it to the funds when they're buying, but it's 130 million shares have to be bought. That's a big surge in demand. You know, this is a guy who says there's no demand. There's gonna be demand for Tesla stock. We know there's an increase in demand for Tesla stock because the index funds have to buy it. And we know that other funds that benchmark are gonna buy more. We don't know if the supply is there and he's speculating that there's some investors out there who front run the stock and apparently he thinks they're gonna sell cheap. What, what, you know, why would he think they're gonna sell cheap? If they were front running, they're gonna hold and wait for the best price they can get that's gonna drive the price up. So he's just not like, the, like that doesn't make any sense. I'm not a big short-term guy. I don't like short-term trading. I'm a buy and hold investor, but that was just outright nonsense that you just heard from Gordon Johnson. Outright nonsense, made no sense. Now, to your question of what our thesis is, listen, next year, right, Tesla has only been profitable four quarters out of their entire existence as a company since 2016, excluding credit revenues. These are government funded revenues that Tesla gets. They weren't even profitable last quarter. Next quarter, for the most part, we believe those credit revenues significantly fall and in 2022 go away. The reason is because every, every automaker is now selling their own EVs. Every automaker is now selling their own EVs. What is he talking about? Tesla is producing in the ballpark of 500,000 EVs this year and may hit a million EVs next year. What 
existing auto company, what regular auto company is selling anywhere near that number of EVs? There's talk that the Ford Mustang Mach-E is going to be 4,000 units a month. That's 48,000, maybe 50,000 for the year. Compare that to Tesla selling a million. Or Porsche Taycan is selling in really low volume. Volkswagen has the ID3 and ID4. They're selling in low volume. There are some low volume vehicles from some vehicle makers. But, you know, does Subaru have an EV? Does Toyota? Toyota's like the biggest car maker. Do they have an EV? Am I missing something? Where's the Honda EV? None of the, most of the car companies have zero EVs. And the few car companies that are making some EVs are making very few, very, very few. This regulatory credit thing is not a big deal. It's not important to Tesla. What matters to Tesla is increasing production, getting more and more efficient in production, and getting the cost of selling vehicles down, getting the cost of producing and selling vehicles down. And then they may lower price some, but that allows profit to go up on the vehicles themselves. That's the real story here. So if Tesla goes back into loss making status, and when you add to that the fact that even the big jump in their Chinese revenues, their market share in China only went from 8% to 12.5% October to November. The, the prior high this year was 25%. So they're losing market share in China and their EU market share has fallen from about 33% in Q4 to around just above 10% right now. This guy can't make up his mind. I mean, he admits that Tesla is growing and they've grown to 180,000 units in quarter four, according to his own estimate. I think it's going to be higher, but he admits that's a that's a massive growth. And then somehow he's saying that sales are down. Well, where'd the cars go? If they're selling fewer cars in China or they're selling fewer, or they have lower market share here or lower market share there, where'd the cars go? What happened? If they made all the cars, are there some massive parking lot somewhere holding the excess vehicles that Tesla made? No, you're admitting they're going to deliver 180,000 vehicles in quarter four, if not more. That means they're selling more cars. That means they're growing. Growth is not slowing. You're, what, he doing, what he's doing here, if you go back to my previous video about laughing at Tesla Q, this is a classic Tesla Q trick, is you cherry pick numbers. You say, oh, look, sales in Norway are down in July. I made that up. I'm not sure what, what month they were down. You know, Tesla, because Tesla's production was primarily in Fremont and their supply to Europe came from Fremont, there were months where they sent a lot to Europe and there were months when they sent very little to Europe. And, you can, and the same thing with China. You can cherry pick numbers, but he just admitted that sales went from 12,000 a month to 21,000 a month. And somehow he's saying that their sales are down in China. It doesn't make any sense. Wait, you know, this is just absolute raving nonsense. So in the markets mm -hmm. where you have competition, they're losing share. So as their growth slows, as their earnings turn back negative next year, we think there's going to be a significant sell off in the shares institutional ownership right now, 41%, roughly, nearly an all-time low. As, that, as, as people start to sell those shares and the retail money, which is driving the stock, starts to sell, we think there's going to be a swift downdrift in the stock. You've seen this before. I know it sounds crazy. Look at Tilray. Look at Sun Edison. Look at SunTech. Look at some of these stocks where they went from five to 300, back to five. They went from two to 300, back to zero. It does happen, and we think Tesla is a prime candidate. Right at the beginning of that last clip was another one of those moments where he's, he's, he's fudging things. In the markets where they have competition. Well, Tesla has competition in every market. From the very beginning, Tesla has been competing with gasoline-powered vehicles, with internal combustion engine vehicles. Tesla has always had competition, and they always will have competition. The problem for Gordon Johnson and people who hate Tesla and bash Tesla is Tesla cars are better than internal combustion engine cars. They're just plain better. Their total cost of ownership is lower. They're quicker. They, they have so many advantages. They have better technology. There's so much more about them. They have, they have longer lifespans. There's so much better about them. It's, ins it's insane. And there's this manufactured idea that unfortunately some Tesla supporters also go into that they talk about market share among EVs. Mar EV market share is irrelevant. Tesla and other EVs are all competing with gas-powered vehicles, and Tesla's market share is growing against all vehicles. That's why they're producing, if they're producing more cars, right? They're going to produce 800, 180,000 and selling 180,000 cars in quarter four, and they're going to do 500,000 vehicles this year. And that 180,000 in quarter four projects out to 720,000, maybe 800,000 or more next year, I think to a million. That means they're taking market share from internal combustion engine vehicles. They're growing. And Gordon Johnson, 
you kind of wonder at some point, is he just lying? Is he just making this stuff up? Or does he actually believe what he's saying? And then he goes into these, compares to these companies we've never heard of. Oh, they went from five to 300 and back to five. I'd never heard of those companies. I don't think any of those companies produced 500,000 cars in a year. This is one of those things where they deny, this is a classic thing with Tesla Q is that they deny the accomplishments. It's, they, they ignore SpaceX. SpaceX is fantastic accomplishments and, you know, landing rockets and like, ah, anybody can land rockets. No, no, no one else has landed a rocket booster yet. No one else has landed an orbital rocket booster yet. Yeah, Jeff Bezos landed a pogo stick. But, you know, no one has done it. And the same thing, no one has made of an EV with more than 300 miles of range. Nobody has made an EV that's comparable to a Tesla. And the gasoline-powered cars are not even close. So Tesla is making better products. They're growing manufacturing. They've got, they're about to have four factories. He, they never asked him about why Tesla has so many factories, what the impact is of the additional factories on Tesla's future. You know, I haven't seen him talk about that anywhere. How do you handle the fact that soon they're going to be producing vehicles in Berlin, vehicles in China, including the Model Y now rolling out, more vehicles out of Texas? Doesn't that increase volume? And as Elon explained, having the vehicle production closer to the customer means they're able to lower cost. Switching to lithium iron phosphate means they're able to lower cost. That means they're able to satisfy more demand. This is going crazy. Tesla is growing great. Everything is wonderful. And you're going to have jerks like Gordon Johnson ragging on Tesla until the cows come home. But they're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. Tesla is doing great. This is really exciting. If you like this video, check out my video where I make fun of Gordon Johnson and other Tesla Q Tesla haters. Please subscribe. Smash the like button. Check out the t-shirts. I'm wearing my Starship t-shirt. It's one of the most popular t-shirts on my, on my page. Check the links below. Please support this channel on Patreon. Buy t-shirts. And thank you for watching.